Each advanced step carried us farther and farther from civilization into a desolate, barbarous country. But our new home lay beyond all this and was a shining beacon that beckoned us on, inspiring our hearts with hope and courage. I could only hope that we would get through safely and was much gratified that we were at length en route. Our watchword? Westward ho! Migrants, as they set off from Missouri, really did think of themselves as moving off into the wilderness. And by the wilderness, they, if they thought about it, they would have meant um, untouched land, on land unshaped by human beings. But of course, most of the area they were covering was nothing of the sort, that Indian peoples had used and shaped this land for centuries, indeed for millennia. They'd shaped it through fire, that they'd determined where trees would grow and where they wouldn't grow along the plat. They determined when grasses came up because they burned to bring up early grasses in the spring. They, of course, had planted crops over much of this region. They had shaped entire landscapes. Beginning in the 1840s, an estimated 250,000 to a half million people made the journey west on what later became known as the Oregon Trail. There have been other migrations in American history, but this migration of 2,000 miles across the plains and mountains captured the American imagination and became one of the most powerful and enduring symbols in American history. Thoreau sees Oregon as metaphor. Eastward, I go only by force, but westward, I go free. Something like this is the prevailing tendency of my countrymen. I must walk towards Oregon. It was at Fort Hall, or a few miles out of Fort Hall, that the trail divided. And it is said that the trail to California was marked by a pile of gold quartz. And uh, the other trail had a sign which read, To Oregon and those who could read uh, came here. Although many more people went to California and Utah, it is the Oregon migration that strikes the deepest and most resonant chords in our national mythology. I think that's a family values story here, that Oregon is a family migration story and California is a disrupted family story and just puts such a spotlight on greed. The gold rush doesn't have any softening touches to it that these people are trying to make a new life for themselves. Well, no, as a matter of fact, they're planning to rip something out of California and go home. Farewell Bend, a place that inspires mixed reactions. Here, the trail finally leaves the brutal Snake River Valley. But just ahead are the rugged Blue Mountains. The Blue Mountains in uh, northeastern Oregon were very precipitous ascent and descent. Often the wagons had to be taken down by block and tackle. And also now winter was approaching. This is September, October. And uh, it wouldn't do to be caught in the Blue Mountains in the winter. From Farewell Bend to the Columbia River, this section of the trail stands out in dramatic contrast to everything which has come before. For the first time in months, the emigrants see stands of trees and forested hillsides. Indians brought us salmon for sale, but we, having never seen salmon, refused it because of its color, believing it to be soiled. They tried to tell us in their language that the fish was good, but we were as ignorant of their language as of the salmon. To the Cayuse, it seems strange to find people going hungry in what to them is a land of plenty. Everything that was provided to us came from the earth. Everything. Whatever you take from the mountains or from the rivers, anywhere, you always give thanks. You always say a prayer, and you thank the Creator for giving you that. 
that's a law, what they call the Natitait Taman, which the Indian law, that you always give thanks. You always make sure you take care of it, because if you don't take care of it, you're going to lose it.